Now the next slightly more complex translation is we are going to try, we're going to create an LOD1 model um, of buildings uh, in the city using an input shapefile. Now the shapefile is all 2D and it is broken down, uh, this is uh, the city of Trento in Italy and it's broken down unfortunately in Italian but thanks to Google Translate we can figure out what things are. Uh, another little plus is that they actually also have an English translation on their areas. So you can see we have railway areas, we have buildings, we have roads. Uh, the key thing about the buildings is they have a height value here that we are going to extract and use to create um, proper uh, building polygon or building um, shapes. So let's skip to the workspace. And here is slightly more complex and we are setting uh, a number of different types of features. Um, we are setting railway features, road features, water bodies, land use, and buildings. Um, I use an attribute filter to filter by the, uh, the type. Again, in Italian, uh, I apologize, but again, Google Translate is very handy. The, mo the simplest ones to deal with are the transportation, just railway and road. All they require is set a setting to LOD1 multi-surface and city object member. Um, for the water bodies, we, I decided to go a little bit more complex and we set an attribute to class to 1030, which is river. So we're setting a river class on that. And again, multi-surface and city object member before writing out to the water body. The vegetation comes in from four different layers. Uh, we have woods, we have orchards, uh, grassland, and vineyards. Um, we use a attribute value mapper to map the various um, output types, output classes. We also set some more classes here. Um, again, we set the LED1 multi-surface city object member, and it goes up to land use. Now the buildings are, the, are the most interesting. We have three different types of buildings. We have basic buildings, we have churches, and we have warehouses. For the churches and the warehouses, we set their class to the correct one for that. And the classes I've been essentially looking up within the city GML specs here. Now for the buildings also have the uh, the building height in them, but not a really convenient way. They're, they're essentially buried in this attribute here. So it's building H23.5M area, et cetera, et cetera. So what we want to do is just extract that number from this entire attribute. To do that, we use a string searcher transformer. And this allows you to set a regular expression that will extract uh, just the, the heights. So I know that the height lies between an H and an M. And I set up a little regular expression to, to essentially take any number that's separated by, or may or may not be separated by a period and some decimals. And by wrapping it in these round brackets here, I say just extract a number, don't use the, don't, don't keep the H and the M. And those extracted values will go into a, 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 a match parts attribute, which is actually a list. Um, now that I've extracted that attribute, I want to send it to an extruder. Now in the extruder, I am telling it to extrude by height and to set its height to that matched parts, which is the actual height of the building. Um, again, in this case, we set level to one multi-surface city object member and we write out to building. So now we're writing out all these features to a city Gmail file and let's look at the results. I'm using here uh, the FZK viewer, which is a free viewer from I think the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And this shows you the output in city GML. We have our rivers, we have our railways, we have our roads, and we have now our 3D buildings. And this can be, or maybe not, kind of slow response here. So that is, oh, there we go. So fairly slow rotation. 
uh, on my little laptop here. It's a, it's a very large model, but we have essentially a, a now a full 3D model created from 2D data. Uh, 